I have made a multitude of videos exposing Jim Clyburn for being the sellout snake that he is to black America. This man is not in office to do right by black Americans in making sure that we receive tangible, concrete, transformative legislation that will right the wrongs of the past and close the racial wealth gap. No. He's in the position that he's in for the sole purpose of corralling black Americans like cattle to make sure that we don't ever veer too far away from the Democratic Party. Don't you dare entertain being an independent and all that talk about building up grassroots candidates like Marcel Dixon, who's running for Congress in South Carolina, and Tamar Johnson Sheely, who's running for U.S. Senate in Georgia. People like that who truly represent black America's interests don't even bother wasting your time. You know, like I know, that the machine machine is way too big to run up against, so don't even try. And Republicans? They're going to bring back Jim Crow if you let them get into office. So your best bet is to stay right here with the Democratic Party where it's nice and safe. And hey, look at this. We've got you a black woman Supreme Court judge. Now, I know it doesn't close the racial wealth gap or anything like that. It doesn't solve any of the ills within the black community. But hey, it's better than nothing, right? This is literally Clyburn's job to keep black Americans blindly voting Democrat year after year after year. And he pretty much admits to all of this in a recent article by The Insider titled Rep. Jim Clyburn says Hillary Clinton would have won in 2016 if Obama had nominated a black woman to the Supreme Court. In this article, Clyburn falls just short of actually outright saying that the Democratic Party strategy to gain black votes is not to promise them transformative concrete legislation, but instead give them symbolic nonsense like promising them a black female vice president and Supreme Court judge. That'll get them out to vote. Don't believe me? Well, let's get into this article and you can see for yourself. House Majority Whip Clyburn said that former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton would have won the 2016 presidential election if former President Barack Obama had nominated a black woman to the Supreme Court, according to The Hill. While speaking with the newspaper, the South Carolina Democrat brought up Obama's nomination of now Attorney General Merrick Garland for the vacancy that arose after the February 2016 death of Associate Justice Antonin Scalia. Now, here's the important part, because these are direct quotes from from Clyburn. I'll always believe that if this had been done when Garland's name went up, that Hillary Clinton would have been president, he said. He continued, all you've got to do is look at voter turnout. Look at Hillary Clinton's turnout. I just think the black vote would have been much more incentivized in Michigan, for instance, and other places that I think would have made a huge difference. It would have given her a much better message to run on. So her message to run on shouldn't have been concrete legislation for the black community, which it wasn't anyways. But according to Clyburn, it should have been, hey, we nominated a black woman to be a Supreme Court judge. Now, for those black Americans who are Democratic Party apologists, how are you not offended by this? This is how stupid they think you are. They think that they can just throw out meaningless, symbolic nonsense at you and that you'll just go out and vote for them regardless. This is an insult. And the more I read, the more obvious of an insult this gets. So let's carry on. While Democratic presidential nominees previously won the pivotal states of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania in every election from 1992 to 2012, Clinton lost all three in 2016, a decreased turnout among black voters coupled with a collapse among rural white voters doomed her candidacy. Had Clinton won all three states instead of former President Donald Trump, she would have won the White House. Earlier in 2016, Clyburn pressed Obama to nominate a black woman, Howard University Law School Dean Danielle Holly Walker, which journalists Jonathan Allen and Amy Parnes wrote in their book, Lucky, How Joe Biden Barely Won the Presidency. However, Obama nominated Garland, who was widely regarded by legal scholars as a moderate while on the highly influential U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit to replace deeply conservative Scalia. Obama saw the resistance that Senate Republicans were building and sought to find a replacement who was a respected commodity in a sharply divided Washington. Because of the political climate, President Obama wanted to make sure he picked somebody who 
who was beyond any possible criticism over whether or not he was ready to serve, a former Obama White House official told Politico. Republicans in the upper chamber, led by then Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky and then Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley of Iowa, blocked the nomination anyway. Clyburn's earlier point was that a black female judge being blocked by Senate Republicans would have added a selling point for Clinton's candidacy and increased enthusiasm among black voters. So they're telling you that even if Republicans blocked it, the Democrats still could have sold you not on concrete legislation, but on the symbolic dream of having a black woman Supreme Court judge. And black America, you could have had it, but those evil Republicans stopped it. So now when you see the rise of a Kamala Harris as vice president and the nomination of Kentaji Brown Jackson as Supreme Court judge, as well as the theatrics of Cory Booker as he recited his monologue during Ketanji's confirmation hearing, it all makes sense now. I was in the White House with my Democratic colleagues and I'm, again, I'm in my joy, I can't help it. <laughs> and, and, and the president's asking our advice, who should we nominate and whatever. And I look at Kamala and we have a knowing glance, which we've had for years, when she and I used to sit on this end of this committee at times. And then I try to get out to the president what it means, what it means. And I want to tell you, when I look at you, this is why I get emotional. I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're a person that is so much more than your race and gender. You're a Christian, you're a mom, you're, you're, you're an intellect, you love books. But for me, I'm sorry, I, I, it's hard for me not to look at you and not see my mom, not to see my, my cousins, one of them who had to come here and sit behind you. She had to, be, she had to have your back. I see my ancestors and yours. Nobody's going to steal the joy of that woman in the street or the calls that I'm getting or the texts. Nobody's going to steal that joy. You have earned this spot. You are worthy. You are a great American. Corey's monologue went on for about 10 minutes strong, but the Democrats figured, hey, this is what black folks want to hear and see. And if that'll get them to run to the polls during the midterms, well, here you go. In early 2020, the Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden pledged to nominate the first black woman to the Supreme Court if he won his bid for the White House. After receiving the coveted endorsement of Clyburn in the South Carolina primary, Biden easily won the state's primary fueled by the support of black voters. Look at good old Clyburn doing his job to keep the South Carolina cattle right there on the Democratic Party ranch. The victory set him up for a dominant performance on Super Tuesday and the remainder of the Democratic primaries, and he retained that broad support in his November victory. Weeks after Associate Justice Stephen Breyer announced in February that he would step down from the Supreme Court at the end of its current term, President Biden nominated Ketanji Brown Jackson the first black woman to serve on the court. Really think about this. The Democrats are so confident in how thoroughly programmed black Americans are to vote Democrat by default that they just openly told you in this article their whole game plan to get the black vote is simply to give you a bunch of symbolic nonsense. Now, in Clyburn's recent interview on MSNBC, he had the nerve to sit up there and say that we need to start looking at the Biden administration through the analogy of the glass being half full versus half empty. Instead of pointing out all the things that he hasn't done for black America, we should look at the things he has done, like appointing 11 African-American women to the appeals court. What more does black America want? Well, I'm glad you put it that way, because we're not trying to say to people all the time that when we look at these things, we have to see the glass as being half full rather than half empty. And the problem that we've had in recent years, I think, is that everybody wants to focus on the glass being half empty. If we do like John West told me uh, when he gave me a little lesson early in my career, he said, when you look at that glass, you see this being uh, half empty. When I look at that glass, I see this being half full. 
That is because of the differences in our backgrounds and our experiences. And he sent me back to my office and said, let's see what we can do to continue filling up this glass. Wow. And so that's what I think we have to do. There's so much has been done. This president uh, has passed the Rescue Act. He's done uh, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. We have a magnificent, uh, you know how hard it is to do the appropriation right. bills. Uh, we've got a record set in the appropriation bills. And so uh, the glass is being filled up. And we ought to focus on what we can do next to fill up this well, glass. And the judiciary, the judici judicial nominations. I mean, President oh, these, Biden is moving at, at such an important clip. And there's diversity, and, and a great diversity, which follows up a president whose idea of diversity was getting old white men, uh, moderate-aged white men, sure. and young white men as prosecutors and on the federal bench. It was Trump. Absolutely. Trump. It was. It was overwhelmingly. Yeah, White absolutely. Mail. The Supreme Court on yesterday is just uh, another step uh, in that uh, trek uh, toward a more perfect union. Look at the uh, appeals code judges. Look at, he's done what, 11 African American women uh, to the appeals code uh, over the years. That equals all the others put together before him. Wow. And so I think it's just meant fantastic what this president is doing, and that's where we ought to keep our focus and stop saying, well, he hadn't done this and he hadn't done that. He hadn't done a lot of things, but he's got three more years if we uh, just work with him. I honestly can't wait for the midterms to come around just to see if all of the symbolic crap that Biden has given black America actually worked. Will we just show up and stroll to the poll and vote blue no matter who once again? Or will we finally have learned our lesson and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go the grassroots route and vote for brothers and sisters like Marcel Dixon, who's running up against Jim Clyburn in South Carolina, or Tamara Johnson Sheely, who's running for U.S. Senate in Georgia. I guess we'll find out soon enough, but I am definitely praying for the latter. So with all that being said, that does it for today's video. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. All social media links will be pinned in the comment section below. Please make sure you text TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That's TD Hip Hop to number 33222. That way you'll get a direct text notification whenever I release a new video, but it also serves as a protection plan for myself in case YouTube ever gives this channel the axe. I'll be able to send you a direct link to where you can find me next. And last but not least, for those of you who have a love and appreciation for the work that I put in on this channel, the number one way you can show your support is through Patreon. For only $3 a month, that will help put me in position to take TD Hip Hop Media off of YouTube. Remember, the goal is not to grow big on YouTube, but to grow independent of YouTube. And for those who have issues with joining Patreon, you could also hit the join button that's next to the subscribe button and that way you can become an official channel member for as little as three dollars a month as well and lastly if you have not already please make sure you join the emailing list there is no way that i can go independent of youtube if i cannot take the audience with me and the link to that will be pinned in the comment section as well thank you for your time and until the next video peace